This thing just arrived from the future. A future where simplicity, style, and stellar sound come in the same box. A future where all audio is streamed wirelessly and where no one can afford to buy an apartment, let alone a house with a dedicated listening space. But as dystopian as that future may be, I'm really glad they sent this thing back because it's actually really, really cool. NZXT wants to make building a custom PC easier. With their build system, just set a budget, see how the computer performs, and build takes care of the rest. Watch to the end of the video to learn more or click the link below to get your custom PC today. First of all, the Cell is a beautiful product. That's thanks to Sing's co-founder, CEO, and chief designer, Chris Stringer, who worked under Joni Ive at Apple for over 20 years and was the lead designer on the original iPhone. The transparency and reflectiveness give it a distinctly Star Wars vibe, Empire, not Rebels, while the interior curves give it an organic quality that keeps it from looking too sterile. It'll go great with your Serif TV and Eames lounge chair. And the cell's design language carries forward to the inside as well. Somehow they've managed to put all the major components on full display, but still have it look elegant and understated. It's got three horizontally oriented horns, each with two dynamic drivers covering the mids and highs. And for bass, it's got two six inch force balanced subwoofers. This is really cool. In a traditional subwoofer, the cone's movement causes vibrations in the enclosure that are typically dampened by adding more mass. Here, the two drivers move like this, which means that their movements cancel each other out. No distortion, no vibrations, just smooth, clean bass, in theory. I mean, they did put a hole in one of them for the nub that threads onto your choice of heavy proprietary stand. Actually, if we look closer at that, it's home to another cool design element, the foreskin, excuse me, I mean the interface. It's a ratcheted rotary encoder that spins freely for volume control and pulls down with a click for play and pause. There's also a USB-C port and that's it. There's no speaker wire terminals for $1,800. Well, that's because it's not meant to compete with your LS50 Metas. Instead, the cell is a premium wireless speaker that really ought to be compared to the HomePods, Sonos's, and soundbars of the world. But it's also better than those in some very important ways. The idea is that you plonk down your cell, or ideally cells, anywhere you want in your space, plug them into power, and let the app do the rest. And I gotta say, Sing did it. They managed to make the whole experience feel luxurious, from the space age packaging, to the gorgeous app animations, to the gravitas sound of their custom suite. The device emits this noise, then uses its three onboard microphones, which I'm told are only on during calibration, to measure the room's reflections and adjust its EQ accordingly. The goal is to create an even sound field, no matter where in the room you happen to be, and that is why cell is shaped the way it is. The rectangular horns have super even dispersion, that is at least on the horizontal plane. So it's a design that makes sense as more and more people live in smaller open concept homes where every space is multi-purpose. In the app, you can even aim the sound field around the house, whether you're cooking, couching, or copping a feel of the soft fabrics available at lttstore.com. And if you have more than one cell, which we don't, I'm told that two cells can give you a sound stage that is wider than stereo, and if you pony up for three, you'll reach an ethereal level of envelopment where you don't lose the center channel as you move around the room. Mm. But we only have one of them. So how did it sound? Well, in development, the team started by putting the cell in an anechoic chamber and tuning it to have a flat frequency response curve. And in my opinion, that's where they should have left it, but they didn't. Next, they tuned it to their own target curve, which was described to me as something that's representative of the experience the team has. So in other words, it's a HomePod with a lot more bass, like obnoxious levels of bass. Like if your apartment doesn't have concrete walls, you probably won't be able to turn this thing up much louder than a level you can talk over without your neighbors 
banging on the wall. Which is not to say that it's a bad speaker. It's actually pretty impressive for its size. The highs are really clear and lifelike, and I believe Sing when they say the sub plays down to 30 hertz. It's just not flat to such an extent that it's not even suitable for entire genres of music. Metal, for example, sounds comically bad. But then, I mean, come on, who listens to that crap anyway? For cool people like you who listen to hip hop and EDM, especially at parties, the cell probably works great for you. Or, I mean, you could just change the sound profile using an EQ app, right? If it was flat once, it can be flat again. Unfortunately, that's a big maybe. Right now, the Sing app, which is still exclusive to iOS, only shows Spotify Connect and AirPlay 2 as potential wireless sources. No Bluetooth even. Now, Spotify has a built-in equalizer, but it doesn't work while using Connect or AirPlay. So, okay, how about your iPhone's OS level EQ presets? Well, that works if you're listening via Apple Music, but we tested both YouTube Music and Spotify, and they didn't work. Don't despair though, the cell has a USB-C port. Remember? And it turns out that plugging in both Android and iOS devices was great for charging, which actually is pretty handy, but that's it. Neither of them detected it as an external speaker. As for our MacBook, well, it did work, EQ and all. And you can use the USB-C port to connect old school devices to it as well, like AV receivers and turntables, as long as you're okay with using one or more likely two adapters in the chain. A funny thing though, is that despite the lofty and pretentious claims on the website, the cell needs to receive a stereo signal or mono if you're desperate. If you feed it a surround mix, say from your Blu-ray player, for example, it'll only keep two of the channels and you'll just have to guess which two with all the other data being lost. Now I'm told that Sing is working on some kind of proprietary HDMI cable that will be able to transcode eARC output from your source to USB-C, but there's no word on when that will be available, how much it will cost, or how many people will care. Because if you're concerned about the cell's features to that degree, the product probably isn't for you anyway, and you certainly wouldn't pay $1,800 for it. The truth is that in a product like this, a lot of your money is going toward industrial design rather than just performance. And for people who have already heavily invested in the aesthetic of their living space, the cell could be just the ticket, especially if they continue to invest in more connectivity options. Because all it has to do in that case is sound good enough, which it does, while being delightful to use and to look at, which it is. So if your space and lifestyle, not to mention wallet, are conducive to it, I'm not not recommending the cell. It's unlike anything else we've ever seen. And hey, if Sing doesn't sell a million units of these things and ultimately fades into obscurity, well, that's great for you because now your one, two, or three cell speakers will appear even more alien and wondrous to your guests, which is probably why you bought them. Just make sure that your butler handles them with care because apparently acrylic is still super delicate in the future. Tough sell. Hey, got him. You know it's not a tough sell? Our sponsor. Thanks to NZXT for sponsoring today's video. With NZXT's build system, getting a custom PC built is simpler than ever. Just set your budget, see how your PC will perform in your favorite games, and build takes care of the rest. Their recommendation engine provides benchmark data for the expected performance of your build at 1080p and 1440p, and their FPS estimates are guaranteed to be within 10% accuracy. You can customize and upgrade your build with various NZXT case options and RGB lighting setups, and they feature transparent pricing and a flat $99 assembly fee, so you can spend less time worrying about the upgrade costs and more time gaming. 
With all your PC's components covered under one warranty plan, NZXT will manage any problems you have, and their expert live chat is available for real-time help and troubleshooting. Great news for our Australian friends. All of this is now available to you too. With more than 13 years of experience developing high quality PC components, let NZXT's highly trained builders help you hit the next level. Check out NZXT's build system today using the link in the video description. If you guys enjoyed this video, watch the lounge update that we just did where we updated our lounge with a sweet projector setup. So uh, that was a, uh, was a pain in the butt, but definitely worth it.